Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we're going to be creating this memory foam effect using dynamic paint. This video is part of the dynamic paint series where we're taking a look at each different surface type and this week we're looking at displace. If you haven't checked out the first video you can find it in the top right corner right now. Now before we begin this tutorial, there are two add-ons that we're going to enable in order for this to work properly. We're going to go up to edit, down to your preferences, and then underneath the extensions, you're going to want to enable the curve tools and the extra mesh objects. So you can search them right here and then just make sure that they're enabled. Once you've done that, we can go ahead and delete the default cube. And now when we press shift A, we have a lot more options to choose from. We're going to go over to gear and then add in a new gear object. Now this is gonna be the object that rolls on the memory foam. Now you can use any object that you want. I just found that a gear looks pretty good. Next, we're gonna go into edit mode, select that bottom edge by holding alt and left clicking, and then hold shift alt and left click that edge right there as well. And then we're just gonna press control E and bridge those edge loops so we get a face along the bottom there. Then we're gonna press R, then X and 90 and enter. So it's standing upright. Then finally, we'll press Control A and select rotation so that we apply the rotation to that object. Now for the memory foam object, we're gonna add in a new cube. In the properties tab, we're gonna set the Z height to around one meter. And then the X and Y, we're gonna go all the way up to around eight meters. Make sure you also press Control A and apply the scale here as well. So all those scale numbers go back to one. This will come in handy later when we start simulating. Now for the path that the gear is gonna follow, we're gonna add in a new curve. So over in the curve menu, select Bezier. Then in top view, all you have to do is just select these different points here, move them around, scale them out, and then just extrude them however you like. Now this part is totally up to you. You can create whatever path that you want. I'm just gonna go with a S shape or so, something like this. Once you're happy with the shape, you can go over to the curve settings. We're gonna set the resolution here to around 32. So we get a much smoother curve. And then underneath the path animation, this value right here controls how long the gear is gonna take to go all the way to the end. And for this value, we're gonna go up to 200. Now to actually get the gear to follow this, we need to select it, jump over to the constraints tab here, select add a new constraint and choose follow path. For the target, of course, it's gonna be the Bezier curve. The other option that we want to check is the follow curves option. This will allow the, the gear to actually rotate as it's following the curve. So all we have to do is hit animate path, and now we can see this is working. But there is one problem and it's not rotated the right way. And in order to fix that, all we have to do is go into edit mode, hit R, Z, and then type in 90 and enter. And now when we play the animation, you can see it is rotating along the curve as it goes through. The next step is to actually have the gear rotate so it actually looks like it's going through the memory foam. So if we play the animation, it's gonna do something like this. So it's actually rotating as it's moving along. Now in order to calculate how many rotations we need, what we need to do is a couple of math equations. First off, we need to figure out the circumference of our gear. Now the circumference is this value, the diameter, which is 2.17. We're gonna times this by pi. So we're gonna control C to copy this value, the X value right here. We're going to paste that value in, backspace a little bit and go star, and then just type in the word pi. And this will give us the circumference of our object. So the circumference is 6.8 meters. Next, what we need to do is calculate the length of our curve. If we select the curve now, since we enabled that curves tools add-on, what we can do is jump over to the edit tab. Underneath curve info, we can select the length option and this will, this will give us the length value and this is in meters, so our length is around 21 meters long. So now what we need to do is select this, control C to copy that value, jump back over to the item tab with the uh, gear selected. We're going to put this in front of this value here so we're basically taking the length of our curve, dividing it by the circumference of our gear, which the circumference again is all the way around. So it's a full 360. We'll go divide and enter. And now we get this value. So this is the amount of rotations in order for it to reach the end of the curve. 
So all we have to do here now is just backspace one time. We're gonna go times 360 and enter. So this is the value that we need at the end of the curve. So what we'll do is we'll jump all the way to the end, which is frame 200, and then hit K and select rotation. Then we'll jump all the way to the beginning of the timeline, set the X rotation to zero, and then hit K and select rotation. Finally, select both of these values along the bottom here, select T and choose linear. So now they're gonna rotate at a constant rate. Now when we play the animation, it is inverted and that's an easy fix. All we need to do is jump to frame 200, add a negative to the front of this, K rotation to override that keyframe. And now when we play the animation, you can see this is working perfectly. That is looking pretty good. Let's set the end frame in the timeline to 200 as well. And the other thing that you could do if you wanted to make this look a bit more natural with a full fledged animation, you could have this curve drop down into the memory foam and then go through the curve. But for this tutorial, I'm just gonna focus on the dynamic paint and working with all of that. Our whole scene is ready and set up, so now let's work on the dynamic paint. We're gonna select our cube here, and when we go into edit mode, we're gonna to need to add a lot more geometry in order to get the displace to work. So what we'll do is hit Control R, we're gonna add in 128 loop cuts going all the way across. Left click and right click. Do the same thing on this side, Control R, 128, enter and then right click. Finally, along the side here, we'll zoom in a little bit, we're gonna add in a couple of loop cuts here and you just kinda of wanna eyeball this and make sure it's about the same size faces as on top. So right about there is pretty good. Then we're gonna go over to the physics panel, select dynamic paint, make sure the type is on canvas and then click add canvas. We're gonna set the sub steps up to a value of five just in case the gear has some glitches that will help prevent that. And then for the surface type, of course, we're gonna be using the displace. Before we talk about these three settings here, let's select the gear object, select dynamic paint, switch it over to brush, and then add a brush in. Automatically, you can see this is working properly and it's displacing our cube. Now there are a couple of settings to go through. Let's play the animation to right about there, and then we'll select our canvas here, go into front view, and take a look at this. For the two settings here, one is called max displace and the other is displace factor. The max displace is the maximum amount of displacement that will happen on our object. With it set to zero, that means it's disabled. But if we were to drag this up, we can control how far we want the displace to affect it. So I think leaving it at zero for this animation is perfectly fine. The displace factor will take the already existing displacement and then multiply it. So right now with it set to one, it's not really doing anything, but if we were to go up to a value of two, it's gonna multiply what's already there times two. So now you can see the length is doubled. I'm just gonna leave this off at one. The other important thing is incremental right here. What this will do is it will add more displacement on top of already existing displacement. And now when we play it, we can see this happening. And the reason for that, I think, is actually the sub steps right here. Let's set that back down to zero. And now we'll restart and play it. And yeah, that's actually the reason that, that that's happening. So let's go ahead and leave these sub steps at a value of zero. Now to actually get that memory foam effect, all we need to do is check dissolve. Now when we restart and play it, we can see the animation is slowly dissolving as it plays. And that is looking pretty good. For the length of the dissolve, that is controlled with this time value. We're gonna set this a little bit lower to 120. The other thing that you're gonna notice is that our edges here are a bit jagged and it's very sharp and that doesn't really look like memory foam. Now there are two ways to fix this. One way is to add in a subdivision surface modifier. If we go ahead and add that in, we'll restart and play it. We can see this works, but we still are getting that kind of jagged edge along here. Now, instead of using the subdivision surface modifier, I found that using a deform smooth modifier right here actually works a bit better. So let's go ahead and enable that and then we'll restart. There are two values here, the factor, we're gonna bring this up to around 0.8, and then for the repeat value, let's go up all the way to around 0.4. Now when we restart and play it, we're getting a much smoother look here. You can see this is much smoother along this edge. 
we can also right click and shade everything smooth. Now there is this issue right here. You're gonna notice at the beginning of our animation, we get this effect. Now, like I said earlier, you could have this animate come down and then start going through. That is one way to prevent that issue right there. But I think for now, we'll just leave it as it is. It's not really that big of a deal. And before we create the material, let's go ahead and bake this in. Select your canvas, come over here to the cache setting. And if this is currently grayed out, that's because you probably need to save your project. So go ahead and save your project and then click on bake. Now, the last thing that we'll do before we set up the material for our memory foam is this gear here. I wanna make it look a bit better and we can do that by adding in a generate and a bevel right here. Let's press control A, make sure the scale is applied and then we'll bring this down and bring up these segments to smooth out that curve. Then you can right click and shade it smooth. To create the memory foam material, we're first gonna add in a couple of objects around our scene to actually get some nice reflections. Let's add in a new plane. We'll drag it to the bottom of our object, scale it up a bit. And then for this lamp here, we're gonna switch it over to a area light. We're gonna set the power here to 2500. Then we'll bring up the size a bit, something like that. Rotate it and then place it right about here or so. That looks pretty good. Maybe give it a slightly yellowish color like that. Then we'll do another light. We'll bring it over here, move it this way. And for this strength, we're gonna go much lower to around 300. And then for the sides, we're gonna drag these values up. This is more of a fill light. So something like this will look pretty good. As for the world settings, we're just gonna go a little bit lighter, something like that. And now let's go into the render view to see what it looks like. For the material, go ahead and select your cube here. You can split this view and switch it over to the shader editor, or you can use the shading workspace. It's completely up to you. Let's create a new material. And the most important thing here with a memory foam is creating that subsurface scattering effect. We can do that by opening up this setting, bringing up the weight all the way to one, and then we'll set all of these values to one as well. And then the very important value here is the scale. Let's zoom in here and see what this looks like. If we bring up the scale here, you're gonna see that the light is starting to actually go inside our object. Let's go up to a value of around 0.5. That is looking pretty good. We'll bring up the roughness to 0.9. And then for the color, we're gonna go with a slightly yellowish color. Something like that will look good. So you can see here with the weight at one versus with the weight at zero, we're getting that nice subsurface scattering effect right inside of our object. That is looking pretty good. And the scale value here controls how much light is going to be uh, scaled inside of our object. The higher you go, the more light is gonna be passed through. So probably around 0.6 or so will be perfect. The other thing that you can do is over in the material tab, scroll down here and you can turn on ray trace transmission and then in the EV settings, turn on ray tracing here as well. For the color management, I'm gonna set the look to high contrast. That'll make sure our object looks even better. And finally, the other thing that we're gonna do is add in some small bumps all along our memory foam because this is what actually memory foam looks like. And this is pretty easy to set up in our material. We're first gonna press Shift A, add in a texture, noise texture. We'll then add a texture coordinate node. So over here, texture coordinate node, take the object, plug it into the vector, and then we'll add in a converter color ramp right here, take the factor, plug it in, and then over right here, we're gonna add in a vector bump node, take the color, plug it into the height, and then the normal is gonna go into the normal of the principled shader. We can see here, this is the effect that we're getting and we're gonna change the scale to be much smaller. Let's go with 150. For the detail amount, we'll leave at two, but the roughness, we're gonna go up just slightly to 0.7. And then for the color ramp, we'll just drag these values a bit closer. Something like that will look pretty good. Now, if we zoom in here, this is the effect that we're getting. Now, I do think we need to invert this so that the bumps are going down rather than up. There we go, that looks a bit better. And one more thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Control Shift D on this color ramp. We'll place that here. And we're gonna change the color just slightly for these bumps. So for the white color, we're just gonna select that color that we just created, plug this in. And then for the black color, 
we're going to select it, eyedropper tool and select the color here and then just drag it down just a hair. So we get some slight differences in color all along our memory foam object. For the gear, you can select it, create a new material, and then all we have to really do is bring the metallic up, the roughness down, and then maybe the color, we can go with slightly darker color, something like that will look pretty good. And there we go. From here, all you gotta do is just position the camera wherever you like, and then render an animation. That's gonna do it for this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. If you created something cool, feel free to send it to me on Instagram at Blender Made Easy. And again, make sure to check out my new book on Blender Simulations. I'll put the link in the description. If you have other ideas for tutorials you would like to see, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.